Some people are saying that Nikola Motors are set for a big comeback. Is this true? Is the company that brought us some of the greatest frauds in modern history really going to make a big comeback? And should you consider investing in them? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Newcastle in Australia. If you're new to the channel, normally I live in Melbourne, Australia, but I'm up here on holidays with my boys at their cousin's house. Newcastle is a beautiful part of the world. It's near the coast and they are actually building one of the world's biggest batteries nearby that apparently is going to run an entire town of up to 50,000 people. It's going to be in about an 800 gigawatt hour size battery run by solar panels. It's going to be absolutely enormous and it's exciting to see because I think this is going to happen more and more and more, but realistically, probably local grid scale batteries are probably going to take over most of the West within a very short period of time. And I may, and I talk in my videos sometimes about why this will happen. Now, Nikola, getting back to this story, are they set for a big comeback? Well, Seeking Alpha believes they certainly are. Now, obviously, production delays, fraud allegations, and the fact that they don't seem to do a whole lot there other than getting other companies to build their vehicles for them have harmed Nikola's value and their reputation for good reason. However, Nikola has started to manufacture, well, assemble, the vehicles are manufactured in Germany by another company and then they assemble them here. It's first Nikola Trey electric trucks. In December, they have two. Now next year, the company is set to ramp up truck production and deliveries. If Nikola executes on its production plan, the stock value could definitely go higher. So will they execute? Now shares of Nikola Corporation surged 18% on Friday after the electric truck maker said that it made its first customer deliveries. The start of customer deliveries is a bullish development for Nikola. And 2022 could be a comeback of sorts now that Trevor Milton isn't in the picture. Obviously he was their former CEO who lied through his teeth about I don't know, hundreds of different things. It was a joke, really, a running joke on the YouTube. The funny thing was about it all, that there was hundreds of YouTube videos showing all the frauds that were going on. And yet General Motors, amidst all of that, didn't watch any of them and made an agreement to supply Nikola to basically create a partnership with them. It was, it was bizarre on an epic scale. But now Trevor Milton is gone. The company does seem to have potentially turned the corner. So Seeking Alpha says, that Nikola's commercial prospects have improved significantly over the last few months. 2022 could be a good year for Nikola if the electric vehicle company continues to ramp up deliveries of its battery electric truck and actually sticks to its production plans. Now, Nikola tweeted on Wednesday that it made the first Nikola tray battery powered electric truck delivery to Total Transportation Services Inc. And yes, that's actually true. I made a video about it. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. Now, I've, I titled that video, Did Nikola Really Beat Tesla to Production? And that's the reason I did that is because a lot of commenters were saying, look, 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 Nikola is legit. They've beaten Tesla to production. Look, I told you they were better than Tesla, which was really, to be honest, a bit ridiculous because technically they did beat Tesla to production, but technically they didn't manufacture the vehicle themselves. So whether or not you'd call that a win is highly debatable. And I talked about that in the video. Check out that video. Now, Total Transportation Services, a Californian port trucking company, signed a letter of intent for the delivery of 100 Nikola Trey electric trucks back in May of 2021. Nikola's deal with Total Transportation Services included a pilot project that requires the delivery of two electric vehicles and two fuel cell electric trucks before the end of this year. Now, when this pilot project gets completed successfully, the letter of intent calls for 30 battery electric vehicles in 2022 and 70 fuel cell electric vehicles, obviously hydrogen trucks, in F in 2023. Now, additionally, Nikola said that it signed another letter of intent with Hennef Transportation Systems last week for delivery of another 100 Nikola electric trucks. Now, initially, Nikola will only deliver 10 electric vehicles to them once those electric vehicles are successfully integrated into the company's transportation 
fleet, Nikola will deliver the additional 90 electric trucks to them. Now, Nikola are saying delivery of those first 10 will actually happen in the first half of next year, which is very possible. So the start of customer deliveries is a big accomplishment for any EV company, but especially for Nikola, which had to deal with allegations of overpromising achievements, while those allegations were definitely correct. Now, it also faced an investor exodus after its founder was confronted with fraud allegations, which, to be fair, do appear to be true, and was prosecuted by the SEC. Now, with the first Nikola electric truck delivery having taken place already, the vehicle maker has kept its promise to commence with deliveries in Q4 of 2021. So what about the SEC? What happened with that fraud case? Well, they actually did settle. Nikola got into hot water with regulators last year after the company and key personnel at the company made misleading statements about the technological capabilities of the company's first ever production truck. Now, the article from Seeking Alpha interestingly fails to mention the fact that, well, a very important fact is that Nikola actually towed the truck up a hill and then let it roll downhill because it wasn't a working vehicle. It couldn't actually drive itself. So they had to just roll it down a hill to create the impression to investors and to the marketplace that they had a working electric truck. They said it was working. It wasn't. They lied. And that was just the tip of the iceberg. Now, Trevor Milton, the founder and CEO of Nikola, had to step down from his position and he was indicted on fraud charges. These events significantly harm the reputation and the valuation of Nikola's stock. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of those investors who lost millions of dollars don't sue Milton and potentially sue the company as well. Now, Nikola has accepted its role in making misleading statements that were made to investors during 2020, and there was lots of them. Now, the company has agreed to settle civil fraud charges for 125 million US dollars. However, that 125 million dollars won't have to be paid immediately. Reports are that Nikola will actually pay the settlement in five separate installments over the period of two years. While Nikola's founder still faces criminal charges in court, as he rightly should be, the settlement agreement closes an unfortunate chapter in Nikola's history. Now, it's important to remember this total settlement sum represents about 21% of Nikola's available cash at the end of the September quarter. We don't actually know how much cash I'll have at the end of the year, but I imagine it will be even less than that. So the Asian investor says you shouldn't be expecting any profits from the company anytime soon. In fact, I wouldn't be expecting any profits in for at least a couple of years. Nikola's electric vehicle and hydrogen fuel cell vehicle production is set to ramp up in 2022 and ramp up again in 2023 but the EV maker will not make any profits anytime soon. In the first nine months of this year, Nikola generated a loss of 528 million US dollars, which was more than double the loss in the year in the previous year period. Now, as Nikola ramps up production of electric vehicles and fuel cell vehicles in the next two years, material losses will be shown. However, by 2025, Nikola could reach a level of output that results in profitability. What about the risks with Nikola? Well, I've already touched on a few of them. Those include potential further legal suits, profitability, and also since Nikola has started to make electric vehicle deliveries and agreed to put its legal troubles behind it by agreeing to a settlement with the SEC, their risk profile has improved a bit. Now, the Asian investor says that all Nikola has to do to drive a revaluation of its shares in 2022 is to execute on its production ramp and make deliveries as agreed upon with customers. Now, to do this, while it is true that Nikola has to expand truck production capacity at its Arizona manufacturing plant to 2,400 trucks annually in 2022, they also will be relying upon the actual company that manufactures the vehicles. Nikola just assembled the vehicles in the United States. Now, Nikola does plan to further ramp up manufacturing capacity to 20,000 units in 2023 as well. And if Nikola can stick to this timeline and reach their production milestones without additional delays, then the firm's risk profile could skew even more to the upside. Now, in an earlier forecast, Nikola projected 3.2 billion in vehicle revenue 
based off of 12,000 electric vehicles and fuel cell powered vehicles in 2023. Now, due to delays in development and production, this goal is clearly not going to be achievable. Now, the Asian investor estimates that Nikola is 18 to 24 months behind its original production plan, but could achieve this level of output in revenues by 2025 or 2026. Now, the start of electric vehicle deliveries was a milestone event for Nikola and an important test for Nikola, which has been through the ringer for the last two years, thanks to the antics of its ridiculous CEO. However, now that the firm has proven it can actually produce and deliver its Nikola Tray electric vehicles, the stock faces dramatically improved prospects for full year 2022. Now, if Nikola can just avoid negative headlines and make deliveries as planned, perhaps announce additional delivery agreements or letter of intents, shares of Nikola could be set for a big comeback in 2022. Now, in my view, they haven't technically proven anything by pr delivering two vehicles that they didn't manufacture themselves, that they assembled. So realistically, we don't have enough information yet for you to even come close, remotely close to invest in Nikola. At this point, it's pure gambling if you invest in this stock. This is the reason that Seeking Alpha, to be honest, has lost credibility for articles like this, because realistically, we need way more information than Nikola is providing us. What do they build in this truck? What is proprietary for Nikola? Do they actually build any of the truck themselves? As far as we know, they're actually built by a trucking company in the United States, a trucking company in Germany, and Nikola does the assembly work in the United States. Realistically, we don't know details, technical specifications of the batteries, how well, what kind of range these vehicles have in the real world. This is the kind of information that to invest in a company you need to have. Now, clearly they need to show evidence of being able to deliver more than two vehicles for you to actually have a good understanding of what they can do in 2023, 2024, 2025, and 2026. In my opinion, the stock is still overvalued based on what they've actually done and what they plan to do in 2022. Now, right now, there is a lot of competition out there from fully established truck companies, such as Kenworth, Toyota, Daimler, Cummins, Mercedes, HYZN, and even Volvo. Plus, Tesla will hit the market soon. That is a lot of competition to contend with for a company that doesn't actually manufacture the vehicles themselves. Personally, I don't see a bright future for this company, sad to say it. I do think it is, but there is significant risk of this company going bankrupt before 2025 comes around. And I really don't understand why people are invested in this stock when there are significantly better options available, all of which I've talked about, BYD, Xpeng, Tesla, NEO, even NYNIU, CATL, so that's my view on this company. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Am I crazy? Am I wrong? Am I being a bit too negative here? Maybe I am. Let me know in the comments below and it'll be interesting to see what you have to say. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.